If you haven't watched it yet and are about to try Tuca and Bertie, the new adult animated sitcom from the studio that brought you BoJack Horseman and are expecting something similar, stop. Just stop now or you'll end up having the reaction that I had to the first few episodes of just sort of shuffling and going, um, I don't know if this is really my thing, um, I. Because stylistically, Tuca and Bertie is a very different show and it's very upfront about that. It's not that it's bad, far from it, it's actually pretty damn good. And I shouldn't have gone in expecting anything too similar, or even wanting it to be too similar, because, hell, I've got Bojack Horseman, why would I want this to just be Bojack Horseman, but with different characters? So the show's about two 30-something best friends, Tuka and Bertie. Bertie's a shy, neurotic bird lady who works a boring desk job. Tuka's a wild, impulsive, air-headed Tukan who does all sorts of crazy shit. And they're quite different characters, but they operate as two different sides of the same coin. While Bojack Horseman's about full-on heavy depression, Tuka and Bertie is about day-to-day -day anxiety, and it's a light, fluffy, fun, if a tad annoying at times, Saturday morning cartoon for adults. While Bojack's approach to over-the-top hyper-reality is in its plots, Tuca and Bertie's is in its aesthetic quirks and visual gags. The plots are your typical shy but sensible character learns to be assertive at work type things, but it's mangled together with the type of surreal, quirky visual humour that you'd see in Nickelodeon cartoons, but notably curated for adults. Like in this episode here, where Bertie's sexually harassed by a co-worker, and her breast literally detaches itself from her body and runs away, and she's just left with this gaping hole in her chest for about 10 minutes of runtime until she recovers. Huh. That's that's actually quite a bleak mental image now I think about it. And and there's this bit here where Bertie's flicking through her diary and seeing full schedules of the same thing on every page until sweet death, but then it just continues to the afterlife and it's the exact same schedule every day. It never ends. It's a silly and off-the-wall surreal joke, but if you stop and think, you realise just how depressing and relatable that is, and oh my god, you did it! Oh my god, you tricked me into thinking that Tuca and Bertie was Bojack Horseman's bright and colourful and fun sibling, but it's actually just as miserable, and... and... Actually, yeah, alright, it is just Bojack Horseman's bright and colourful and fun sibling, but hidden beneath the Saturday morning cartoon surreal visual humour stylings, you will find it deals with similar topics and social situations that most adults could probably relate to. Feeling the need to compare yourself and your friends' sex lives, feeling trapped by a full work and social schedule that leaves little room for anything new or exciting, but also kind of fearing what that desire for something new and exciting could mean. You feel the existential dread of being trapped in a normal everyday routine and breaking out of it is so difficult but also terrifying and has the potential to cause a lot of damage to yourself and your loved ones. It is buried a lot deeper than it is with Bojack, but it's in there. Tuca and Bertie has disguised its relatable characters and situations in a slightly different type of bizarre hyper-reality from Bojack. It could conceivably take place in the same universe as Bojack, but it's the same anthropomorphic world viewed through a different lens. My only real complaint with Tuca and Bertie is that in terms of story structure, the episodes can feel a bit messy and meandering at times, and it does kind of feel like it's taking fucking forever for the show to decide what the point of this particular episode is. It can be very scattershot, and just like with Bojack, the pilot is easily the weakest episode. So we go from Bertie moving in with her boyfriend and Tuca moving out, to this whole deal with Speckle's bowl of sugar, and then we're at this bakery, and to get the bowl of sugar back we need to hold a baking contest or something, and I'm kinda just sort of sat there tapping my foot and waiting for the punchline. I suppose the loose and random and scattershot feel is in aid of attempting to recreate the style of Saturday morning cartoons like Ren and Stimpy that came across like they were written by a kid on a sugar high. And then Tuca uses this cream on her STD in the supermarket toilet, and her sex bugs grow massive and they start humping everything! And then the exterminators arrive, and they have to hold a trial to see if the sex bugs should be allowed to live, and oh, I see now, it was all an exercise in Bertie overcoming her public speaking anxiety. Right, that was the point of the episode. Thank you, focus at last. While Bojack Horseman's very tight and controlled, Tuca and Bertie is very much out of control, which is kind of the point, yes, and admittedly part of the appeal, but this might be part of why it took me a little bit longer to get used to its style, cause while I came to realise it was doing similar things and its characters are similarly relatable, it has put a lot more work into masking said things behind its bright and colourful veil, and it has masked them in a different way to Bojack, and that's why if you go in expecting a similar experience, you may get that off-put reaction at first, but stick with it. You will find you get used to its different style and it really grows on you, and it gets better with each episode. The Jelly Lake episode in particular was fucking incredible. 
Oh yeah, also, it kind of unnerved me in episode 7 when I realised just how familiar the character of Big Hairy Stallion 69 was. Like, Big Hairy Stallion 69 is literally just me from 10 years ago, a long-haired, underconfident, socially awkward, lonely kid. In fact, this character was so real to me that it made me extremely paranoid, and kind of suspicious that the creators of Tuku and Bertie have got me in some sort of weird Truman Show situation, where they've got people like me in controlled environments where they study us to create ultra-realistic characters for their shows. Hi Stuart, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? What are you hiding? What do you know about me? They're watching me while I sleep, aren't they? Um, but yeah, go watch Tuca and Bertie and stick with it. It may take a little while to get into if you're a morose shithead like me, but once you're in, you'll probably have a lot of fun with it. And as said, episode 9 is bloody marvellous and made the whole thing worth it for me.